Hey guys, it's Chris here with Off-Road Farm, and on today's video, we're going to be installing a new steering box brace kit from Off-Road Design. So before we get started, I did want to point out a couple of things. I did upgrade to this PSC steering box. It's ported for Hytro Assist, and it's also a crossover steering box. So your normal steering box has a really short drag length that goes from the steering box to your driver's side knuckle, and it goes back and forth. And if you're off-road and you're flexing any, that can really affect your steering. So that's why I went with this crossover steering. Now this box has a drag length that goes like this. So if you're going to upgrade to crossover steering, you do have to upgrade to a different box. And since I wanted to do hydro assist anyway, I thought it was a good time. Hey, let's just go ahead and do crossover steering and hydro assist at the same time. Another thing to point out is even if you're not going to be changing out your steering box you can install this brace kit without removing your steering box but i don't really recommend that go ahead get your steering box off of the frame clean that up really well and check for cracks because these old square body frames are known to crack around the steering box especially if you've been running oversized tires if you've been wheeling it pretty hard without the brace kit that's the whole reason for this brace kit is so we can prevent this frame from cracking. So, let's get started on this project. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to get some of these lines off the top. One of these was cut by the guy who pulled the motor out of this. Appears to be a 18 millimeter. I don't have an 18 millimeter line wrench. Well, looks like I didn't need one. Next, we're just going to loosen up this bolt so we can get this steering shaft out of the way. Now we're just going to use a couple big screwdrivers. Now that we've got the steering shaft out of the way, we need to remove these bolts. Should be four of them, two here. There's one down here in the crook, and then there's one in front of this front cross member. So we gotta loosen those up, and then our box should be ready to come out. If you have a second person to help you, that would be nice, because that box is gonna be kinda heavy. So I'm sure you could see where that box kind of sat down a little bit. I left that top bolt in it, so now I'm gonna to try to go over there and hold it while I take it out. Whenever you do crossover steering, you have to take off your sway bar. So since it's already disconnected from the axle, because the axle's not in here, it's real easy. It's just four bolts. It's a 5 8 on top and 11 16 on the bottom. Now that we've got our pump off, we're going to clean this area really good. And we're going to check for cracks. And if you do have any cracks, you need to get those fixed before you put your new box on. Now that we've got our pump off, we also need to take out this bracket that's in front of the cross member. This is not part of the kit. This is already included on your frame. The old steering box does not bolt to this, but the new kit has a bracket that will go in between this bracket and your cross member to help reinforce it. So go ahead and take this out, clean it up, give it a coat of paint. When you order the steering box brace kit, you'll get these two braces, three new bolts for your steering box, and also a bolt for this brace. Make sure that you save some of these bolts with these spacer sleeves from your old box because you'll need one to reuse. So now we need to put our long brace in so we can figure out where we need to drill this hole. Now on my truck, 
I already had a real small hole here in this cross member, but it actually wasn't quite in the right spot. It was actually off center. I think it was a little low and a little to the driver's side. So it wasn't in the right spot, so I couldn't just drill it out and make it bigger. So I had to mark this hole where I need it to be drilled. And let me show you how we kind of mock it up together so we can figure out where we need to drill this hole. So we have to mount this steering box back up here temporarily so we know where to drill that hole. If you're working by yourself, the easiest way i found is to just get one of these bolts towards the closer to the cab. They're a lot easier to reach. Get those started, get one of them started. Then we can swing this box around and get these front two started. So we can take out this one so we can put our brace in. All right, so we got two bolts started in it. Now we need to put some bolts in the back. I'm just gonna use these uh, old bolts from the old steering box. So one will go here in front of this cross member and then one goes behind it. Alright so now we've got all four bolts started. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten up these forwardmost two. This one here and this one down here. Then we can take these out and get our brakes. Not going to torque those down to any spec. We just want it pretty snug so that we know that this will be in the right position. Now we're going to take these two rearward bolts out, put them through our long brace, and restart them. All right, same thing. Now we're just going to snug these up. Now that our brace is in here, we can go ahead and mark it. And this hole is conveniently sized where a Sharpie will fit up in there. And it's pretty snug, but you can go ahead, you can put it in there and go ahead and make a mark. So here's that Sharpie. You can see it's going in the back and it comes out the front. It fits in there real nice. It's pretty snug and that'll help you mark your hole. So once you get your hole marked, you can go ahead and drill it out. Now, like I said, in my case, my cross member had a small hole. It was a little low. And I think it was a little over to the driver's side. And I knew it was gonna be a problem whenever I was gonna try to drill this out. So I went ahead and I drilled my mark out with a small pilot drill bit. And that went just fine. And sure enough, whenever I tried to step it up to a bigger drill bit, I tried to jump down into that hole and then the hole wasn't gonna be in the right spot. So I just used my pilot hole that I had drilled and I just took a small burr and I just ground this out with that burr. Now, if you don't have a burr, use a rat tail file, even a chainsaw file. But if you have one, chainsaw file will work just fine on this. It'll just take a little bit longer until you get that hole just perfect. Now, before we go to bolting everything and tightening it down, we need to make sure we get all the bolts started. It's the bolts, there's four bolts in this bracket two of which go through this bracket from off-road design, a bolt into the steering box, and then also the bolt on this long brace. So let's go ahead and we'll get everything started and then we'll torque it down. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take out this top bolt towards the front and we're gonna loosen this bottom bolt. We're gonna loosen these, but we're not gonna take them out. So now these bolts are just a little bit loose. We have a little bit of play in this so we can get our bolt through here. All right, there's one started. All right, there's two through. All right, now that we've got these front two. Now we're going to do these two on the side. Now the kit did come with a new bolt, but it didn't include any washers. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna throw a washer on this. It's pretty easy. Just stick it through the hole and go ahead and put your washer in. Let's put in our last steering box bolt now. <clears throat> uh, if you wanna check out my frame reinforcement video, I'll leave a link to it right up here. But in order to get this bolt in, you might, you might have to push up a little bit. I don't think you can see that, but you have to push up on it just a little bit to get the hole to line up. <coughs> uh -oh. It's a good idea. Go ahead and get everything started. Then you can take one bolt or one nut off at a time and lock tight it. That way if you run into any fitment issues you don't have to worry about your lock tight setting up while you're trying to get everything else started. So I'm just going to run through here put lock tight on all these real quick. Everything started we've got lock tight on everything so now it's time to snug everything down. I'm going to just snug up the steering box, the actual steering box bolts first. Then we're going to come through and we're going to tighten down all of these other bolts, these brace bolts, two here, two here, and the one here. Now that we've got those snug, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten down these bolts on this front brace. These get torqued to 25 foot-pounds. Got my torque wrench sent to 25. This bolt through this long brace gets torqued to 75 foot-pounds. Now it's time to torque down the bolts to the steering box. Those get torqued to 80 foot-pounds. Now we just need to hook our steering back up. You may have to tap on it just a little bit to get it in the groove where the bolt goes. This is that groove right there, that's where the, that lock bolt goes in. So we need to tap this down till we get that lined up and then put our bolt in. Looks like that's going to start. So we'll hit this up with a little bit of Loctite. Go ahead and tighten it back in. If you're remounting your old box, well, you're done. But if you're changing over to crossover steering like I am, now's the time to install the pitman arm. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to make sure our marks are lined up. The box is well marked from PSC. We're going to install our pitman arm straight back. Uh, the torque spec on this is 192 foot pounds with dry threads. And it's an inch and 5 16th socket. All right, Pittman arm was trying to turn on me, so I just got a pry bar in there, see if that'll hold it. We ought to be getting close now. Finally, Woo. once the pitman arm is installed, now let's put in our drag link. If 
your tires aren't perfectly straight. Mine got moved the other day. I'm going to go ahead and I got the nut started on the pitman arm. And then I'll just tug on the steering wheel a little bit until it falls in over there. So now it's time to go ahead and tighten these castle nuts down. You tighten them down to 40 foot pounds. Then you advance the nut until that hole is visible and you put the cotter key through and bend it over. And last step is make sure you install your grease fittings on these. All right, that one looks good. There's our cotter key in. Last step is our grease cert. The last thing to do on this project is to tighten up any jam nuts on any new drag links or any new tie rods. You don't want those things coming loose while you're driving down the road. Also, if your steering wheel is not straight, you don't need to take it and get it aligned. You can actually just adjust your drag link. Just loosen up those jam nuts you can either lengthen it or shorten it and watch your steering wheel turn back to the proper position. Once you get it perfect, just go ahead and tighten those jam nuts back up. Now overall, I'm very happy with this kit from Off-Road Design. It came with most of the hardware you needed. It could have came with those extra 3 8 bolts, but it didn't. It's no big deal. I had plenty of those lying around. The directions that came with the kit from Off-Road Design, like always, everything from Off-Road Design, the directions are great. It's step-by-step -step and it really tells you how to, how to install this kit without running into any major problems. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button.